The first thing that I wanted to talk about was the fact that you actually didn't want to be a fashion designer when you um, were a little that girl. That is true. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I was far from thinking about um, fashion. Um, but I did grow up around design. Um, my mother is an interior designer, um, and hence there were a lot of design magazines in the house. And I had an appreciation of design and beauty, and I did kind of grow up around classicism. So it's not like I wasn't creative. I was, but being a fashion designer or looking into fashion magazines, that didn't come about until I actually got a spot at the Central St. Martin's MA and I thought I need to cover about 20 years of no fashion knowledge um, and just went into being a geek for three months um, until I can, I, I guess, just have the basics. When I started, as you can see, the dresses were very simplistic. It was a shift dress and the printed all the work. And then I, I felt it's very important for me to grow as a designer and work into more um, interesting shapes. Um, and we started working with bias dresses and sculpted dresses and crin dresses. And that's where I get support in helping me um, work the patterns out. So when it's on a bias and half is falling straight, half mm. is falling uh, at an angle, that we can um, pre, yeah, pre-consider that and create that. So um, I, I still feel I have to do it myself. And whenever we recruit people, it's a very particular product so it, I think it will always be difficult I'm just happy that now I have a team that's been with me for two three years mm. so how do you feel when you see other other people that have taken influence from sort of your aesthetic style well I think when I first started as I said print was not around it wasn't a big thing if anything I was going against a wave of uh, pragmatic uh, dressing and um, everyday dressing so I was fighting against that and to me because my work is so much about color and texture I couldn't change that route that was my route and I just had to stick with it and um, what has been very inspiring is that print has become a lot more um, accepted um, now and people were print a lot more easily and you see it on the catwalks on a global level and I think a lot of people see it as a trend of print that's come and go, gone, will go. Mm -hmm. um, but I also see that there are so many changes in the way somebody can create a print that's allowed designers to really diversify and be different enough to each other to make it more than just a trend. And sometimes, you know, they're like, oh, Mary, you're uh, riding the, the trend of the wave of print. And I'm like, well, I hope to think that you're um, creating that um, wave of print and not just riding on it. And I hope that as long as designers who work with print have interesting ideas that are not boring and that are um, looking at the world in a different way and presenting something new, then actually uh, being copied um, just... Um, enhances that strength that those designers have in creating something uh, new that's also very commercially viable or else the high street would never uh, copy it. Mm. Then sometimes you see a copy or two that get really annoying because <laughs> um, it's just too similar and it becomes, you know, we have a price range, for example, in the stores that um, you see here all of our commercial pieces and we do pieces that are a lot more intricate and a lot more architectural that those, of course, are not copied but address that... Um, retails with us you know for 500 pounds and somebody can go and buy it for 50 pounds that is slightly conflicting of course um mm. so that gets annoying and then you're <laughs> like oh, if only i could do something about it but you can't so you try try to just be flattered by the fact that your work has that appeal i feel every season like your design you're a different designer you're taking um the role of an interior designer or a museum curator or um a garden I don't know, <laughs> what do you call the garden? Landscape garden. Landscape garden. Um, because it's, it's a mix. It's a mix of found imagery, and it's um, some imagery made from scratch because you just can't find the right image or because you're trying to create something a bit more surreal. Um, but it's a very laborious process because you find the images, you create a collage, and that needs to work on a body. Um, and then we use that collage as reference to paint our own interpretation of that. So you kind of use your mouse as a paintbrush to create these images so they're not photographic. And they're not sterile like it very often is with digital printing. It's as if you've painted these worlds that you've surreally put together. So it's, it's really exciting because you're working with a subject matter that's of interest um, every season and trying to create a completely different world. Well, I think it's defined me because all my years in London is where I've been shaped as a designer. Mm. When I was growing up in Greece, for example, I wasn't looking at design. So I feel that London has been a huge part of my formation. 
but more importantly, it puts you against people who are innovative on a global level. The attraction is huge. You know, big department stores buy London designers in the same way that they buy global uh, brands. So, you know, I think all London designers are in a really good position now.